You can move over a bit. Move over which way? <laughs> I don't For that. I don't know. Are we live? Hello. We are live. <laughs> I just, I just nudging my mic over going, just move over a bit. What's happened is, um, oh, we look really red, Mike, as well. Why are we looking so red? Can you hear us? Please tell me if you can hear us. Oh, Danny, are we on? Are we on? And are we too? We're on. Hey, Anna, thank you. Yeah, I didn't know. I am red. She, da, da, I'm normally quite red. Mike is quite red, and I'm quite red, and it doesn't help. We've both worn green. With a red background. Yeah, it looks a bit Christmassy, doesn't it? It's a bit... <laughs> that was just you just got me saying tonight and move over a bit. What happened is I've got my lovely big comfortable chair, and poor Mike is on um, an old wooden. Has it got three legs? That stool. I'm on an old stool. <laughs> I'm on a reclaimed stool. <laughs> I mean, trying to adjust the height of my chair to make it look like we're sort of sitting next to each other in a comfortable position. But as, yeah, as you saw then, I was just telling Mike to budge over because you've got more room than we thought. So. It's anyway, not my channel. Anyway, <laughs> sadly. Anyway, hello, everyone. How nice to see you all. I've got, I've said hello to a few of you. Let me just have a look. Danny, thank you so much. I only asked Danny oh, about 20 minutes ago, did I, Danny? To, if he'd moderate, which... Very kindly he did. So thank you, Danny. And I've got Anna on. My daughter is on moderating as well. Um, I did ask Charlotte, our eldest, who's moderated before, but she's she's busy prepping for her live at eight o'clock. <laughs> what can you do? But I said hello to a few. I'll say hello again. Hi, Mel. Hi, Bumblebee Adventure. Uh, hi, Dave. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Locke. Yeah, brilliant. Hi, Mark. Hi, Gemma. Hi, Robin. Oh, hey, Ro. Oh, and hi, Ashley. Hi, oh, is it Ashley? Hello. Thank I'm you for joining I'm going to mention us. you, Ashley, later. He's known as the Plastic Gardener. He is known as the Plastic Gardener. Hi, AD. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, the Twee Garden. Hello, Twee Garden. Of course you don't have a life, Danny. Danny, we see more of your life than I think, you know. I know more about your life than I do about Mike's, don't I? Yeah. And that uh, that's sort of my choice. That's really. how I like it. <laughs> That's how we go. But yeah, yeah. So hello, Detgro from Norway. That's lovely. I don't know if we've had someone from Norway before. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us. It's actually, I can't quite believe, although I should, it's still light outside. And I'm looking over there because we've got a big window up there. But we've got a light here and we've got a light up there. So over the next hour, the light is probably going to change. So hopefully we won't look quite as... The red filter might <laughs> reduce. <laughs> as drunk mm. i was gonna say yeah we're looking quite drunk here but yeah we have we've had sunshine today rue it's been gorgeous you all know rue i mean she's about 25 miles away from where we are and so the weather's always very similar and very often she'll say oh it's such and such here and it'll be on its way to us and half an hour later we're having the same weather but yeah we've enjoyed a really lovely day at the plot today haven't we it's been so nice Blissful. it's just been really really lovely and it's that yeah because i think i was all ready to pack it up we were talking about that and i i, I know a few of you can um relate to this especially with gardening where the weather's bad and we do talk about the weather and it's really boring but you do get to the stage where you just say oh for goodness sake you know, I just want to get on with stuff. It's what are you looking at? Nothing. What are you looking at? I'm just leaning in a little bit. You don't have to lean in. It's your way. I've got, you, I've you just need got to a go stool. that way. I've got a stool that's yeah, got no back. Yeah, we know you've got a stool. But... I've got a, I can't go one way or the other. Well, you go that way. In terms it's of the stool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. We're only on tea. We're actually just having a cup of tea. Um, yeah, I was just really fed up. I just want to pack it in and... I didn't want to do a video this week. And there was, I felt like, in fact, I have video for next week. <clears throat> and it's all quiet, which I know you'll all say, hooray. But it's just, I've set the camera up. I've got on with stuff. And um, yeah, it's been quite nice, actually, because when you go out, you just want to be going on. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I digress. Thank you very much for joining us. The reason we are here is because why are we here, Mike? It's our ninth anniversary. It's oh, well done. It's our ninth allotment Mike, anniversary. Mike, remember, it was this anniversary more than actually our anniversary? Yes. We're just coming up on June the twenty fourth. No, Mike, that's the Gardener's World June Show. June the twenty second. No, Mike, it's in May. It's in May. It's the twenty second of May. 
I'll remember it now. Twenty second of May. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this is more important to us. The fact that we have. I think I first picked the camera up in January 2015. And I've been saying for about the last nine months, it's, um, wow, we've been on for eight years, eight years now. That's really good. And then I realised, actually, to my horror <clears throat> the other day, that it is actually nine years. And uh, so I thought, yeah, just be quite nice to sort of say we're still here. We're still cracking on. And I know we've got a few questions that you've sent in, which... Um, which we'll catch up with in a minute, but but yeah. Oh, who's oh Danny's on the wine. It's okay. incredible to think, isn't it, that that in another nine years we'll be holograms in people's living rooms talking about parsnips. <laughs> Hi Wayne. Yeah, well, we're pretty much that anyway. I always say that, don't I? Well, who was it we had round? Was it someone to do the the Wi-Fi? Uh, uh. Was it the it, it could be anybody. No, we had someone around to do the Wi. He, he was downstairs and he was doing something with the television. Yeah. And it was 4K. Yeah. Is it 4K? Yeah. Or TV? And he, he was setting something up. And I, I sat there saying, wow, it's amazing, you know. And uh, and then I did start saying to him, you know, to think in a few years, we won't have televisions. We'll just have holograms in the middle of our living rooms. And in my mind, it was really real. But he didn't answer. <laughs> he just sort of left the room. I, don't, I think he was quite happy to leave our house after that. But, yeah. I mean, you, you've already got AI. People using you, AI. Train. You've already got people using AI to make really boring YouTube videos. Yeah. Haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. And even worse, Newcastle United vlogs. Oh, come on now. Come on now. I will, you know, I go into the front room. Okay. Victorian house, front room, television. And Mike will very often, um, I'll be up here and he'll keep bringing me cups of tea. And it's like he wants me to stay here. I do. <laughs> because that's I do. He has got the shame of watching. Um, can't say fan pages can i it's not a fan page no it's not a fan page it's a blog various different blogs on newcastle united because geordie here and don't uh, comment us just, don't comment don't... <laughs> Please. i say yeah yeah so he watches those so let's catch up okay oh look look danny's not even on he's the moderator you're donating honestly well done danny um look it might be worth you knowing now that we've come into some financial hardship <laughs> and we're going to have to sell all Jane's equipment. But Danny is actually saying, no, because some people say that. Just and so, the house. Some people just say that just to get some money. Yeah, and we've been broken into names. and everything's been stolen uh, from our house. Well, yeah. But listen, Danny is actually, Danny, I hope, I'm just glad that's cheered you up this evening because Danny has now just put Jane Locks donated to my channel on your live. <laughs> Thank you so much. Both of he you. needs it, doesn't yeah, he? He needs that. He needs. It's a shame for him in a way that he does, but but, but you do as well. <laughs> Hello, Ingrid. Nice to see you. Look, hey. <laughs> Thank you, Log. Hey, Danny. Log's donated to me on my life. <laughs> That's never happened before. Honestly, that is so nice of you. Thank you. I didn't expect it, but it's really nice, and it happens. That's lovely. Thank you. Yeah, he is cheeky. I, I think Danny gives the impression of being a really nice, laid back, happy gardener. Always a cheeky so and so. He is and he's lovely. That's very there naughty. There we are. Very I know naughty. it's naughty. He's lovely. You are lovely, Danny. You are lovely. We all love you. Um <laughs> these are off only fans. You see, I don't know what these things mean. And I say these words and I don't know. I got myself into all sorts of trouble. I'm on OnlyFans. That's what I'm doing in the morning. Will you be quiet? Will mm. you be quiet? Anyway. Anyway. So, yes. So, I decided on whatever day it was that we do this Q&A, of which I have given you no Qs and no As at all at the moment. But I know that a few of them have written down. So, I put it on the Facebook page. I put it on the Patreon page. And I put it on Instagram. In fact, I didn't put it on Instagram. You know when I put it on? Advertising this. Ten minutes ago. Half an hour ago. Okay. <laughs> it's a little bit last minute. So if you're coming over from Instagram, thank you so much. Hello, Green Pakistan Solar Trolley. We love your comments. You you've got you give some of the nicest comments on YouTube. That's so one lovely of the best to names, see you here. If not the I best know, name. I know. I know. In the multiverse. Yeah. Yeah. Pippa and Kaylee say say hello to Rocky. Oh, thank you, Pippa and Kaylee. He's right Rue. here. He's right here, by the way. Rocky's joining in with us. He's supporting. Yeah. 
Uh, hi, Joe. Um, Rue, I mentioned Rue before. Go and watch her channel. She has got just a, we've been there, haven't we? A really lovely small holding. But really excitingly, she's got a lovely new rescue dog called Pippa. And honestly, Rue, I've been watching your little clips on Facebook of, of you going out with Pippa and a few of the ones on, on YouTube. And it's just lovely to see how a dog that went through that much trauma has come out the other side and, you know, just living the best life. So pop over and say hello to Rue. Hasn't she also really got a, a tortoise? who was protected by an electric fence. Am I getting that I wrong, Ruth? I think the chickens are protected by the I electric fence. I thought it was the tortoise. And I, because I think I remember thinking, my tortoise wouldn't have escaped. No, it's not to, it's not to prevent the tortoise from escaping. It's <laughs> to prevent people from stealing the tortoise. Well, I the those a tortoise, sounds a bit odd. A tortoise can do a lot of things, but it can't scale a fence. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah, go, go. Sorry, I'm distracted. If I keep looking down here like that, it's because the um, the questions are coming up here and Mike can't see them at all because he's refusing to wear one of his many pairs of glasses. And uh, you'll know about that. I Ash. think we look too old when we're both wearing glasses. So think? it's best for me to just look old. <laughs> okay. Much better. Thank I need you. every advantage. I am old. I, it was my birthday last week. So I think that was one of the... Um, one of the reasons we've both, you had a big birth. You had your, shall I say how old you are, Mike? Or do you want to keep your age as a, a secret? I am 60, I but I had 60. a very, very heavy paper round. I know. I know you all think he's 70. No, he's actually it. only 60. A lot of you think I'm I, James' dad, <laughs> but you want to see James' dad. I have had that comment before. Um, yeah. It's all natural. But this is all natural. Mike's 60. He's got retirement coming up. And so we, there's been... Your 60th, Mike's 60th celebration seemed to go on for at least three weeks. And then you just think, I'd say to him, oh, is that it now, Mike? Can we stop celebrating now? And someone he hadn't seen for a month would turn up and say, hey, and we'd have to do it all over again. So that's gone on for quite a long time. Then it was my birthday last week. I had the best 60th I'm of all time. 60. I had the best 60th of all time. I think I can highly recommend turning 60. Can't 55, oh, 56, no, 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 nobody bothers. No, 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 57, 58, 59, 60. Oh, everybody's interested. For whatever reason, lots of meals, yeah. lots of gifts, tons of cards. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. It's been really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, it has. It's been really nice. Yeah. I'm not saying it's the best age because it's not. <laughs> it's really good. And I know you have. You, I think people appreciate you, Mike. It's nice, isn't it, that people appreciate you. We went temping bowling. I haven't done that for years. <clears throat> that was good fun. And then went and had chili wings. And okay, I'm sorry it's not gardening, but can we just get this straight? Right, we went for um, with a few members of, of the family and friends. We went for something called chili roulette, where you are given chicken, plates, chicken, chicken wing, wing roulette, wing, chicken, chicken wing, wing roulette. roulette, not chili roulette. That would be like everything's the same. Okay, chicken It'd wing roulette. So roulette. various degrees of heat in the chilies that are used, or in fact, just some some chicken wings are cooked in chilies, some in orange. Some in just barbecue. Garlic, barbecue sauce. Okay. And the idea is you're all meant to take a wing and, whoa, whoever gets the chilli on, pity for you type thing. And I was ridiculed because, one, I used a knife and fork, and, two, I didn't eat this skin. Oh. Because, to me, it's obvious all the chilli is going to be on the skin. So I had a lovely time, quite nice, and I was, yeah. So the whole point is that you pick up these wings from a big, a big, plate full of wings no, you're not really sure which one is the really super spicy one yeah and if you get a really super spicy one that's it you know you're gonna you're gonna have a reaction but yeah we looked at jane who's not had any reaction and she's just cutting little tiny bits of uh, she's cutting like all the lady. skin off cutting like the lady. skin off her wings a with lady. a knife and fork and then eating the the flesh of the chicken which of course has no chili flavor whatsoever <laughs> True. I did take some great photos. Anna's saying there, yeah, I took some where's, great photos and videos our, of other people crying. Why would you do that? Our son -in -law, Why would you do that? One of the reasons I like it so much is that our son-in-law Bogdan is is so incredibly theatrical in his reactions to encountering <laughs> chili. Appreciation of. The I won't say what chili. he says, but there's a, quite a lot of swearing. Yeah. There's swearing. There's getting out your chair. There's jumping around. Aww. It's very very entertaining. Aww. Danny okay. saying, why don't you start asking, uh, answering some of these questions? Do you, you think I ask? should? Well, yeah. Danny, okay. Rue as well. You, I was just looking up here um, for Rue's card. Thank you so much. It's currently, I've got 
what's called a little birthday corner. Mike had a blooming birthday room uh -huh. <laughs> with all his cards and presents. But I've got a little birthday corner with some flowers off my daughters and a few cards. And there's the one off you route, which is beautiful. It's always featuring a canal boat. And uh, the reason I was looking, I always put yours upon the notice board opposite me, but it's still downstairs in the corner, in my birthday corner. Thank you so much. That was lovely. Right. Okay. Questions. Questions, questions, questions. Mike's just picked up a rich tea, which means he's not going to be answering the first question. Okay. Well, Steve's not here, so I'm not going to answer Steve's question. Marcy, I don't know if Marcy's turned up. Um, but Lisa, is Lisa in the chat? She's sent me some sent me some questions. Right. Okay. I'm going to go with Steve's anyway. They might be interesting, even if you haven't asked a question. Even if you haven't asked a question. Right. Steve Digwell, as we know, Steve has Digwell Green Fingers, has says, and we couldn't wait <laughs> to try and get the wording right. What would we do differently hmm. if we knew now what we didn't know then? So I think that's a case of. What would we do differently now if we knew? What would we do differently? What would we have do, done differently then? If we know what we know now. If we don't, yes. Okay. Yeah. So that was quite a good one. Dunking a rich tea. I know it's brave. Shall I begin? Yes, I think we should. So I think allotment wise. Um, we spent quite a lot of time digging out masses of weeds when we first had our first allotment. And, and in fairness, first allotment a, or this allotment? First allotment back in the day, back up in Newcastle. In oh, 19, that was... It was about 1991, 1990, something like that. So, some time ago. Yeah. 40 yeah. odd years ago. That now. was the mare's tail allotment. 33 wasn't it? years ago now. Or well, the Christmas tree allotment. So, we had, both, we, had, we had mare's tail mm. and we had bindweed. And oh. I think we spent an awful lot of a, time digging that stuff out. It was on a hill, wasn't it? Yeah. And I think we, we wanted to get everything ready all in one go. So, we wanted to grow everything all at I one see. time. And I think, well, the one thing that we didn't consider at that time, and we all know about now, or most of us know about now, is a no dig approach. So, we know about that now. Mm. And for me, as somebody who's got a perennially dodgy back, lower back, and I've had back spasms since I was in my twenties, I think if I'd known about that, I wouldn't have bothered with a, a spring, you know, a spring powered spade or whatever we used to have. Do you remember that? Yeah. To turn yeah. all that soil over and all the double digging and all that stuff. I think for me, the biggest thing that I would have done differently if I'd known about it would have been to have popped down to you know to the Aldi or, or the you know the supermarket or whatever, get some cardboard, order some compost. And save myself a lot of hassle and a lot of work. You know what, though, Mike? That is interesting. Thank you. But at the same time, it wasn't. It wasn't a. a it wasn't something that was widely discussed. There, no, nobody did it. No, and and we were talking to um, well, the fellow who owns. Knew. Yeah, the, but the fellow who owns our allotments um, lives next door. And so he overlooks the whole time. He's a lovely man. Um, it's obviously doesn't sell. Um, and he was talking to you the other day and he said about no dig. And he said, oh, well, it seems to be all the rage at the moment. And you said to him that it actually um, has been going for, for years, 30s? Just not 40s? really sort of widely discussed. I mean, I, just it's Charles Dowding well, who he's, has. He's kind of brought it back. Brought but, it back. But we've got a book up at the allotment. I can't think of the, yeah, who the, who the it's author not Charles is. Dowding. But it's from around 46 or 50, 46, I think. Mm. And it's about. Um, it's about gardening without digging. I think it's called gardening. It is. Or successful growing without digging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just a case of it's become it's more new. popular. And it might be, as I always say, five years, ten years' time, it might be with people who thought, think, oh, I've tried that, it wasn't very good. But, but, you, were but telling yeah, me, so... you, you were telling me that, that, that there, are, there are some allotment sites where you're not allowed to no dig. This came up on a Facebook group. It's like um, worshipping, worshipping the devil. I know. This came up in a Facebook group I'm part of earlier today, actually, mm. wasn't it? And it was someone saying that... Um, the allotment chairman interviews or obviously just has a chat with whoever's deciding to take on an allotment. And they are told that, you know, no dig is banned. I mean, you can imagine the comments, you know, and I, I'm not saying no dig is the absolute brilliant thing. It works for us sometimes. <clears throat> it's up to everyone to adapt. We're not married to it. No, no, we're not. We're not. Um, but, you know, but... But yeah, to think that something is banned is so it's just really weird. So do you know? Have are you on a, if you are on an allotment site, do you have rules? I mean, I thought the rules about having no sheds was weird, but to 
ban a, a, a type of gardening that as long as you keep your allotment tidy. Yeah. Where in the allotment, know, where in the allotment association equivalent of Sweden? Oh, are we? Yeah, we are. We, we, we're, we're pretty much. As long as you don't build a, a cannabis farm, I think you're generally okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Oh, that's interesting, Aidy. So Alice Fowler covered No Dig in her 213 TV series. Yeah. I love Alice Fowler. We've got all her books, actually, somewhere. But um, Danny's got jam donuts. Thanks, Danny, for that input. I'd love a jam donuts. <laughs> just, uh, just, uh, but, yeah, banning it. You can't ban it. You, I, I would say if someone, the fellow who's sort of our gaffer, yeah. came down and said, you know, every year it's sort of okay. There was uproar the other year just after we started because people were told they could only have six chickens. They were putting a restriction on the amount of chickens people could have. Fair enough. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to keep your hedge to a certain height and, you know, just maintain it really. But Shed size? I think, I think if someone was... Fine. Well, I can understand that, but... If someone was to say, I, I would want to question their motives. I would want to say, why? Why is that an issue? You know, I'd get myself into trouble for doing that. I know. I know. It may be curious, but I've never heard of rules before. Do you mean rules at the allotment, Steve? If you do, it's a case of... Um... If there aren't any rules, it would <laughs> be honesty, You can do that, Steve. look. Um, we weren't allowed to use cardboard until two weeks ago. Look at that. Our allotment is a private site, so only just got planning for sheds. We are not allowed sheds, greenhouses or polytiles. Okay, so Steve, if you are on an allotment, whether it is privately owned, which ours is, which has its drawbacks because we don't know how long we'll be there. Yeah. Um, they could sell at any point, which they've said they won't, but we don't know. Um, there will be someone in charge, someone who's elected to be in charge. And if it is a council run allotment, there's usually a committee, whichever way, there's always like a certain hierarchy of someone who will just, even if it's just collect the rents. And each year when the rents are due, you might have a list of rules. When you take the allotment on, you might be told, okay, yeah, it's yours as long as you. No cannabis, no <laughs> dig, no bonfires, no sleeping overnight in your shed. There's things, that, yeah. What no if... middle class barbecues late into the night with yeah. uh, with Prosecco. We don't have any of that. We, we yeah. don't have any of that. We had, what were ours? Don't sleep overnight. I think that was the thing. No nudism. You're being silly. Is that You're being you? silly, Mike. I don't think that was a real a real. No, that, that wasn't. <laughs> I don't think there was oh, no sheds. sleeping overnight. No sleep, all right, okay. But, but sense, ours are very, very lax because um, they're big allotments and they're quite private, so you can do what you want as long as you maintain them. Oh, and as long as we've said this before, you keep the hedges down the lane, cut back on either side, so that the owner can get down with his horse and cart. <laughs> so that's practical. That's not just he's decided. Oh yeah, and you can't grow apples because I don't like them. He's got you know, actually. He's, he's got a ride on lawnmower, and he loves to come and cut the all the grass coming down the, down the, the lane. path. Yeah, and he also loves to go on his ride on ride on lawnmower whenever Jane's making a video, which is quite funny. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. I was on his private rules. They're reasonable, I think. Um, oh, Ashley. Okay, yeah. You mentioned this actually. Yours have recently banned all weed killers. I can understand that. I think what a rule that came in when we a general rule across allotments before we were on this side, when we were on the yeah. one up the road, was um they banned <clears throat> tires, car tires, because a lot, um, including us, were using tires to fill with soil and have a raised bed. But then it was, yeah, they might be leached. There's very much a huge awareness now of things that might leach back into the soil and damage the soil for future crops, etc. So yeah. I hope that makes sense, Steve. It's so it basically each allotment site will have its own some sort of committee and set of rules, but some are more lenient than others. So uh yeah, the water it, the water is switched off by us as well, Rue. In fact, it's coming on again. We hope the end of this month. Yeah, normally end of April, yeah. Although the, by the, the rain we've had, honestly. But don't you can't believe that one day soon we may have empty water pumps. But we will, we always do. Okay, gosh, I can't. <laughs> added to the nudity rules 76 and always topless. Abided by, yeah, yeah. April, the mm, you see, Danny, I don't know if you're joking or not. Your water comes on on April the 1st. Okay, yeah, the rain, it's been terrible, but yes, so 
that's Steve's question. Oh, that I didn't even answer that one, but I don't think I need to. I think, oh, well, I think to think if I knew then what I know now would mean that it would have been a really boring journey to where I am now because I wouldn't have discovered anything new. So I sort of turned that question back on itself. Um, yeah, it's still, we're still learning and discovering new things. I, I, and crucially, at our age, we're also forgetting. <laughs> so we learn so some like, things. It's like learning all over again. That and is the forget, stool. I'm sorry, it's a footstool under the table. And no matter how hard we try to label everything every year, oh, don't talk about something gets unlabeled. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. Some level gets washed off. We're always learning. Well, yeah. But it's, yeah, so I'm glad I didn't know everything, although at the time you think you know everything. But I don't think there's anything I've particularly changed because I think my gardening has definitely changed. And I had to go through several years of developing my god this is getting really boring isn't it but you know what i mean i think no no i wouldn't have wanted to know everything so anyway thank can you steve you're not on anyway but can, that's can my I, answer can i come with one more thing oh just something that we did in our first year as mm. um as allotment gardeners and we've just done it again now and we've kind of had a bit of a, a bit of a gap um but i think this vegetable is quite important to us early on because mm. we had loads of veg that we planted that weren't successful but there were a couple of things that were really good and one of those things was mooly Remember that? <laughs> I noticed it got so more coming up now. We had this moody that we grew. Radish, which the is white a, radish. It's an Indian, uh, Indian or an Asian, Asian. radish. Mm. This thing in kind of in, in like first allotment just turned over soil. It grew. I mean, it, they were like, I'm, I'm, there must have been like three or four pounds each each individual vegetable. Yeah, but I think we were meant to harvest them small. We we literally couldn't give them away. Icicle radish. Does anyone else grow moody? They're the white radish. And... Like radish, you think, okay, you can eat several radish in one sitting because they're nice, small, yeah. you know, they're, they're not in your face. They're just nice, but, moderate vegetables. But they're very, in, they're, they're a thing that you can grow, I think, which is dead easy. You can feel like you're an absolute champion gardener, whereas onions, you might try them five years in a row and get nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Or celery or Romanesco cauliflower, you know. Just radish, though. Can't or you, parsnips, really? yeah. But <clears throat> mooly, give it a go. Yes. Wow. Or not. Anyway, let, let us know in the comments if you're growing mooly. That'd be interesting. Nobody's or is it? <laughs> growing mooly. <laughs> I bet you are. Danny, I bet you're growing mooly. I know I've seen on a few allotment um, channels people growing mooly. Courgette's too easy. Very easy. Yeah. Far yeah. too easy. Try mooly. I actually um, couldn't get a bucket big enough for mooly. Bumblebee Adventures. This is interesting. Did you have chickens from year one? Chickens. Chickens from year one. Or would you have taken them faster uh, okay okay uh or would you have taken them faster um we had chickens when we lived up in the northeast when we were in northumberland which we've mentioned this before we lived spent a couple of years living a thousand feet above sea level we dropped out even more than we've dropped out now we dropped out then you'd have loved it lock you'd have loved it <laughs> but we had a small holding on which we couldn't grow anything because the wind sent all you know when you could drive through somewhere really quite remote and the trees are all like that and you think, why is that? That's because you can't grow anything up there. The growing the season was, was about four weeks. It was very, very beautiful. But we had chickens and we had goats and we had a dog. And that was lovely. And that was, um, we'd always wanted a few chickens. That was back in, woo, late 80s, again, about 1990. Yeah. It's a long time ago. Anyway, and then we always knew we'd want them again if we ever had a big enough garden. We've never had a big enough garden. We still haven't got a big enough garden. Our first allotment didn't have. In fact, we might not have been able to have chickens on the first allotment. And then this, the allotment we're at at the moment had space. And the opportunity came up. Oh, this is where the chicken rule came in. This is where, when I said a few years ago, they said you can oh, only have six chickens. That's why we've got chickens. That's why we've got chickens. Because our neighbour Dave said, oh, I've got 12. What am I going to do? And Mike said, that's We'll have them. And so where we've got the chicken coop now, we didn't have anything. So then <laughs> a mad weekend trying to put this coop together with a 
house inside and everything so and we've had them now we've had them since and I love them as you know I just love them we got our three new ones a couple of weeks ago so my, just my so message nice there is it's sometimes okay to agree to something without asking permission from your wife <laughs> but not very often <laughs> yeah 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 it can work out yeah yeah, that's interesting, Locke. Um, just saying about just ban it yourself, AD. I, I had two. My mum still thinks it's amazing stuff. I'm assuming that you're talking about the glyphosate. Yeah, we did. When we first when we first started going in glyphosate, because it was seen to be friendly, it was seen to be okay. Um yeah, it was okay. And and my dad still uses it. Or still use whatever he's got in the, the garage, which has probably been there for a good few years, but just to get rid of the weeds because that was the miracle product that got rid of weeds. And so it, it's just times change and we get more educated about things, don't we? Or not. Or not. The chickens, I don't know if you've seen on you chickens, Steve, but I mean, I was supposed to be working at the allotment this afternoon. I did a few things, but Mike went past the chicken coop. <laughs> <laughs> wheelbarrow or something looking like he'd been working really hard and he just looked over and I was trying not to catch his eye because I was sitting there and I had <laughs> junior junior on my shoulder and we've put a stump a little um log next to the actual chair I sit in which we put in coin that's rocky now corn on top of and so the two other chickens were on the stump and I was sitting there trying to pretend like I was uh, being really busy but uh, I did feel a bit guilty, but they're such but isn't, characters. But isn't Junior Junior pecking your glasses? Junior Junior is pecking my glasses, yes. And my ear, and my hair clip, and my hair. So, but she is very lovely, and I will forgive it. But to be honest, it is. if it wasn't wearing glasses, I wouldn't re recommend putting a chicken on your shoulder because yeah. it could probably... So what I'm hair. seeing in the future is Jane on a little thumbnail with a like, big elastoplast over her eye. <laughs> and, then, oh. and, then, and then the strap line is going to say... I was blinded by a hen. And then that's <laughs> blinded when, by that's kindness. When, that's when the algorithm's gonna go crazy. I know, I know. I need something like that. That takes me back to being, well, between the age of four and nine, wandering around with the national health glasses on with big patch on one eye, because I had a squint. Mm. Thanks, Mike. It's all right. Oh, Steve, yes, you've missed it, Steve. And you know what? I'm not gonna tell you again. You're gonna have to rewind and watch again. That'll get me another view. That's good. But it was a really, really good answer as Amazing well. Amazing answer. To Steve. Brilliant answer. Yeah, it was. Brilliant answer. Thoughtful. Yeah. Okay. So, what can't you grow? Right. Okay, Danny. What can't you grow and wish you <clears throat> could? For example, pineapples, etc. Oh, Mike's got oh. an answer. Go on, Mike. Um, Romanus oh. cauliflower. Oh, we, we didn't know we grew it last year. We grew it last year, and, and, we, and waited we got to that a point. Day. We got to that point where we sort of wrapped the leaves over the top of the Romanesco, and we kept it all. You know, it's kind of weed free, <laughs> and it was no dig, and there was loads of good compost there and everything. And it looked I like it, was, it looked like it was going to get there. And then after about two days, I think I peeled the leaves back, and it had just like all sprung apart and. Oh, well, cauliflower, Gone brown. It's really cauliflower annoying. will do that anyway if you don't pick it just to the right. I mean, cauliflower has evaded us, hasn't it? We're still mm. trying, but the year I grow a really nice, tight, white headed cauliflower would be fantastic. I'll feel like I've cracked it then. Yes, Nigel and Steve, I know where you've been. <laughs> just glad it's finished. Um, I don't think so, it's anything, you, so, yeah, yeah. Well, Danny mentions pineapples, I, but I have said this before. I think I said it on your live, Danny. Um, lemons or citrus fruit, we can't grow them no. I in think, our climate. And it would be the same with pineapples. I think we, we both like growing really odd varieties of things, don't we? Get a lot of, yeah. get a lot of sort of pleasure out of growing unusual yeah. tomato varieties, for example. So oh. unless there was a kind of an Uncle Tom Cobley's um, pineapple, you know, and we had umpteen acres to grow them on, we probably wouldn't be interested. But Danny, you're doing, um, and who else is doing? Uh, is it Nanu's peanut challenge this year? There's a peanut challenge going on. Is you that? don't like that. Yeah. Mm. Um, Chitchy peanuts, so you get your little sprout coming off. And yeah, that looks really good fun. We are trying to grow um, sweet potato. Yeah. We're trying to chip oh. some sweet potato. Oh, yes. Oh, it's too late. Sounds nice. But yes, we are not just your sweet, sweet potato, but the purple sweet potato. Well, some of the kind of the, the I don't know, the it's most too late, of the, really. 
the, the more common one that you find in, in supermarkets, the sort of the light pinky colored one, we've uh, we've got sprouts coming from that one, or, or we've got slips coming from that one. But the Okinawan red red um, sweet potato, nothing, absolutely nothing. Well, it's meant to be. That's the one that's really good for your health, isn't it? We've but... got this character suspended upside down in a jar of water, haven't we, with cocktail sticks? Yeah. It's doing nothing but go mouldy. No. <laughs> Nigel Have we got says, it the right way up? We've tried it both ways up. Mm, Nigel has just said, um, try Clapton cauliflower. They're as sure as da Danny's Helena Swedes. Clapton cauliflower? I've not heard of them, Nigel. We'll look them up. Is it going to be a bit too late to sow them now? Oh, no. We've got our neighbour, Alan. Um, he, what does he grow? That summer cauliflower. And he says it's, oh, it's like hen's teeth getting hold of this seed. So he's harvesting cauliflowers late spring, isn't he, really? Mm. Which before someone else. But I don't know what they're made, but they're not um, Clapton cauliflower. I'll have a look at that. Mangoes. Oh, mangoes would be gorgeous. Hey, Tony. Hello. Uh, the nut challenge, Nanu, and the sunflower challenge from Linda. That's right. Okay. And you're doing it as well, are you, Robin? That's it. Okay. Tony, let's not talk about Danny's video. Let's not. <laughs> You've got two out today, Danny. You've done your live with Gemma and you have done your bean support one, which I haven't watched because we've been doing beans today, haven't we? Yeah. And I'm not going. This has been mentioned before. If you do videos, it can be really tricky if you are about to do something and someone else comes out with a video the day before. You might have it all filmed, you might have got it all done, but the day before and they're doing exactly the same thing and you feel like, oh, no, I can't do it now because it looks awful. So I, that's my excuse for not watching Danny's video. It's just an excuse. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, 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 yeah. Helena's Swedes are lovely. Many of the sweet potatoes are sprayed with an inhibitor, so organic or a seed potato will work better. Yeah, these were from the supermarket. Um, and they were Chinese imports, I think. Oh, right. OK. The Tree Garden says, I'm growing Clapton this year because uh, it's club root resistant. Oh, mm. Danny, um, Alan would like that. Danny, I got you mixed up with Alan. Uh, hey, Bethan, if your sweet potatoes grow slips, are you going to grow them outside or undercover? Mike. We're going <coughs> to use a technique that I saw on a, a YouTube channel a little while back where you have a sort of a woven um, sack, woven bag, um, you fill it up with compost and manure and so on, a bit of soil, and then you run a sort of a funnel down the middle to sort of to water the thing from the top, made out of sort of plastic um, bottles, one on top of the other, little holes drilled in, and you basically pierce this bag and you put your slips, each one inside the bag. So we're going to try the slip in a bag technique. Does that answer so the question? So that's what we're going to try, and I think Is we're probably going to try some in the polytunnel. That's, that was I question. hope that answers your question. In the polytunnel, so it's going to be inside, yeah, not outside, Beth. And I think, um, I think, who was I talking to? Might be Gardner Scott was saying about sweet potatoes. He grows his outside. But then he's Gardner in Colorado. Scott, yeah, he probably has and he really said he just, summers. yeah, he said it's cold, 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 and then hot, hot, hot. And so he manages to, even though they start a little bit later than us. Can I just say, if, anybody, suddenly... if anybody's missed Gardner Scott's amazing um, marshmallow tree video, that, oh. that is, is an absolute treat. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, please Danny, watch it. Could, you put, could you put amazing. a link up to that? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's one of the funniest what, things I've ever seen, I think. What, you mean it's not serious? It's I very, think. very funny. I mean, it's a difficult thing to grow, but he tells you exactly how to do it. <laughs> yeah, it does need warmth, um, Tony. It would be good. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay, back to some questions. So, Steve, we've answered yours. I'm sorry if you were watching somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> um right lisa lisa i don't think lisa's on but she says <laughs> ashley's just odd as it bordered with marshmallow bush very good very good um <clears throat> lisa advice for someone starting with only two raised beds Okay, we both said the same, didn't we, when we read this question. There are only two raised beds. It's a colleague she's got from work. I know Lisa herself has got a huge <clears> garden, and I think she's got, you'll put me right here, Danny, she's got like an orchard and everything. I mean, it just sounds beautiful. But uh, so you're starting with two raised beds, beds. I would say, and you said as well, salads. Yeah. Get some, I and mean, include tomatoes. They're growing upright, so they're not going to take up too much ground space. Could be in space. the middle. Could be in the middle. And that 
Cucumbers. Rocket. Lettuce. Think about things that you... I mean, it, assuming you like salads. But Mustard. think about things that would cost something in the shops but that you really like to eat. To, they tend to be very... cost tend to be, I mean, it's pound fifty here for a little bag of sort of mixed of mixed leaves, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's £8 or whatever for a giant set <coughs> of potatoes. They and take up a lot of ground to grow. So I think to me that's a no-brainer. Danny mentioned earlier on that you planted your rocket out, Danny. And we, we, we've we given a pot away this afternoon because my soda tom at the same time I've and so, we've got, yeah, so we gaze onto a, a plot neighbor and um but yeah just having a clump of that as you're in the pot sorry i don't know if you noticed that but i had a clump of it when i was in the polydon what a fantastic flavor and you pay for that you pay for that in the shop so i would say get as many salads in as you can things that are nice and easy to grow radish make radish not mooly radish your leaves <clears> and you could <throat> even put a little thing of mange too up just like a little wigwam, something like that. You only need one tomato plant or a couple of tomato plants. You know, if you're only going for a small family even, there's, there would be enough in two beds to keep you going. What about so, some peas in the middle in a wigwam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm thinking about your succession. Salads around them. And, and do your successional sowing. Yeah. So you've got a lettuce, a couple of lettuce every week, two or three lettuce every week, as opposed to all of us. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so yeah, that was that, but Lisa's not here either. <laughs> And then her second question was, what do you do when you're not YouTubing? Are we having a life? Would that be an answer? Are we having a bit of a life? We're not really having a life. We're um, just going about our normal daily business. It's I do. Um, <clears throat> I've got various family duties, care duties, um, which I won't go into. But then I do tutoring I am a primary school teacher. I trained as an art historian, went into primary school, wrong thing. Um, but now, rather than working in a primary school, because I've said before, those teachers, oh, my goodness, take your hats off to them, everybody. They do such a good job, and it's getting harder and harder. Anyway, so what I do, I do the nice bit, which is they come out of school, and then they come to me for an hour, and we do fun literature and maths, and it's just... It's just, I, you know, I find it really rewarding. Yeah, so that that's what I do. So that's, yeah, and I work that's daily a, for me. I work then. in a further education college. and Two? Two further education colleges, and I'm responsible for around about nine, 900 students, something like that, and 50 58, staff. 60 staff. I'm, I'm terrible with numbers. Um, yeah. and, and art mm. students and art staff will very much keep you busy Yeah. Um, in, so you don't have any spare time. <laughs> I mean, no, that's it's great. It's a joy. It's a joy. Yeah. But I'll be I'll be very pleased to uh, to hang up the old uh, we're, we're very much, socks. We've got a very good balance. I mean, YouTube, as you know, doesn't make or for me doesn't make any money. So we are lucky that I can afford to do it with you going out and working full time. <laughs> But in the but, near future, we'll be um, impoverished, won't we? We will be very impoverished because Mike is be, retiring. I know we've said this before in July. So, but we're used to you. You just live with what you've got. We, we don't. We haven't got an extravagant lifestyle. <clears throat> she says. I mean, look, you know. So, and we've lived on next to nothing before. So, so it'll be fine. And... We couldn't even afford a good dog. <laughs> Why we've got Rocky. We've got this clown. Oh, bless him, bless him. If anyone watched the doghouse last week, it was like his brother was on there. It was just like Rocky. On With the exactly the same weird behaviours. All right, all right, all right. But the other thing, Mike's, uh, um, you may be meant, Lisa, although you're not there, hobbies. you may be meant hobbies. Uh, with me, it's gardening, winter, winter, any craft you could mention. I've probably been there, gone there, done it. Uh, I sing in a community choir, which I absolutely love. That's a bit of a therapeutic thing every Wednesday evening. It, it's fantastic. Um, taking the dog out, going walks. We love films. We're both film nerds. We both did film history, didn't we, at college? Yeah. And so, yeah, a couple of films a week. It's, yeah, we, we've got it pretty good. What are your hobbies, Mike? Well, I, I think I've said this before, but I used to draw cartoons and I still like drawing. Because you're a trained, you're a fine artist. Um, I did fine art at college. I did the kind of, I did the a, a tricky degree where you're not likely to necessarily find gainful employment, but you will have a rich life. Yeah. Uh, not in terms of money, but in terms of uh, 
in terms of the the ethereal things that you yeah. can't count with money yeah so anyway so yeah so um I've, I've done that and i'm looking forward to drawing and painting and spending endless hours with rocky as he whines at me for things that nobody yeah. really understands the meaning of yeah yeah. Look, I really, hope, no I really hope that this is showing up on your screen, the thanks for being you thing. I really hope it is because that was so kind of you. But I've missed some of this conversation with Danny saying, nagging me, swearing at me, telling me to shut up. And then no Mooley, just finished cropping mine from 2023. Yeah. Um, no YouTube, petting dog. Not sure. I'm not with you there. I might do a channel where 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 I just walk around with Rocky and there's no talking. It might be like the opposite to Jane's channel. <laughs> so it might just be doing things and walking about with Rocky in nice. silence. Yeah. The silent gardener. It's probably some already called somebody called oh, the, the silent gardener with a rubbishy dog. I came across a YouTube channel earlier. It might have been yesterday called the best YouTube, the best, the best garden channel on YouTube. Which I thought was a bit cheeky, and it wasn't. What about, so, <laughs> what about Silent Gardener, like Weird Dog? Yeah. For the title, Weird Gardener, Silent Dog. Two weirdos. Yeah, the whiners. Um, Robin said art history classes were the hardest. If you got your degree in two D art, Robin, yeah, they were a necessary evil. I imagine, you know. So, did you find someone to push your filming? Add in enough, Danny, or is right? Okay, Danny, did you send the window corner? No. We're just resigned to that. It's just you. Danny's know, never going to send that. We know we, it's it's like it's like a lovely lo legend. It's not an yeah. urban legend. It's a garden legend. Yeah, isn't it? It's. I remember the day we've got more chance of building a house out of crisp packets. <laughs> hey, AD says this is a good question. AD, Mike, with you retiring, will we see a new channel, Mike Kelly Pumpkin Patch? No, no but I've, I've sort of answered that question in a roundabout way because I read that question quite a bit earlier. Oh, okay. Thank so you. so no probably not although I, i'm looking forward to showing all these um all these squash yeah. i'm dead excited about the squash this year yeah mike's Super putting all excited. sorts he's putting all sorts because he's got this huge patch for him to do what he wants with so it doesn't have to be mike's what large we patch. want <laughs> that's what my plot that's what it could be called let's stop there stop one man in his patch yeah well um <laughs> we because we're growing all the things that we want to grow on my patch mike's now been given like free reign and so it is brilliant because we've got so many different sorts of pumpkins which will probably all cross pollinate pollinate from um from ali um but yeah you're saying well i'll do the potatoes there as well i'll do the potatoes and then before you said well i'll do the sweet corn there so i said no no i want the sweet corn. The I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna have anything left you're not having the beans or the sweet corn. What you're basically doing is starting another allotment. They're in my patch. But, yes, he will certainly be turning up a lot more for better or worse. Rambling around videos. very slowly in the background. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. It's usually edited out. You know, I'm actually speeded um, up in the videos. Yeah, Lot says, congratulations, retirement is amazing, but stay busy. He's got so many things. It's not just the allotment. You want to get back on your bike. You want to get back out cycling. He is an artist. He wants to get back into these. All these um, YouTube videos aren't going to watch themselves, <laughs> are they? <laughs> but yeah, you've got you've got things for you've got so much stuff going on, and you like a project, don't you? And I've got no friends, so it's going to be interesting no to try friends. and make a friend. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. Well, I'm not. Well, yeah, Jane's not my friend. I'm going to have to. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's my business partner, actually. We don't live together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anna said, I think you could attach a camera to Rocky and just see what he gets up to. Thing uh, is, though, Anna, if we did that, it'd just be really boring. It would just be because he wouldn't move. Once he's, you know what he's like, once he lies down, that's it for hours. Once every he sort of four lie. or five weeks, he'd, he'd lick a fox poo, <laughs> wouldn't he? And then jump in the trend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I do in my spare time, Jane. What spare time, Danny? Um, I keep looking full time Rocky carers, that's what Anna says. Um, I keep missing the top of the conversation, so please, if I haven't addressed what you've said, say it again. Danny's saying he's been sick. Mike, set up a few beehives. We have thought about that before, Nigel, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't, I love bees. As you know, I mean, I put up that little bee watching video. It's not even a oh, short, yeah. but a couple of weeks ago, which I did it a couple of years ago. I sh they're quite hypnotic, but we've just put I up don't know about hives. We've put up two bird boxes today, and actually, oh, over, yeah. probably over the last four or five years, 
We've had more success with bees inhabiting those oh, boxes, haven't we? Those boxes. Than, than blue tits. Yeah. Are, are you setting up any beehives, Nigel? That'd be interesting. Mm. It is the sort of things that people really get into, isn't it? But could you be bothered? No. That's your answer. But thanks. <laughs> thanks for the suggestion. Uh, Rocky would drown the camera in the pond. Yeah, yeah. We've had um, the trail cam is working really well. It, it, nothing interesting, really. A variety Ooh. of very boring birds. There was a black panther last night. There was a black panther. We could. It, it was black and white. The and you'll know that if, if it's night vision, it's all black and white. So it looks really old. The Staffordshire panther. Yeah, yeah. That was the black cat from next door. Yeah, but it looked quite it looked quite dramatic. And we then we had a Siamese cat. Oh, did we? On the, on the yeah, that's as well. the one we thought was the fox. We've had a couple. But we've had a few robins. The robins, sparrows. They're like going trotting down the little bench, the little bit of wood. Yeah. But yeah, because um, when I watch it back, it's out the plot, and you open the trail, come up, and you've got a very small aperture with my eyesight as well, that, which you're watching it on. So it's only when you come home and put it in the computer you can see on the big screen what it actually is so uh tony do not encourage mike to set up a hive okay we're not gonna have a hive <laughs> although wouldn't it be that i do love honey I, I tell you, we've got actually one of our allotment neighbors i'd have to ask him if he doesn't mind being videoed one day um richard oh yeah he's got hives what on his allotment yeah all right okay. yeah well you've seen them no i don't think i have well, I've seen. I didn't them. know that anybody had, had hives yeah, on their lawns. I think it might just be. He started <clears> just <throat> over a year ago, and then last summer I saw him on the lane and said, "How are they getting on?" He said, "Oh, they're really good, really." I wouldn't know where to start, you know, would you? No. Do you get one, two bees, and then you kind of get them together <laughs> like chickens? Yeah. <laughs> Before you know, it, you've got I just a couple know you of thousand. Have to wear big suits. How do you even just start? Big suits. Okay. Do you create the hive and then the bees just come and live there? I don't know. And if so, what if you got those ones with the red know. bums? They're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, no, I don't I don't know. Three, right, okay. Robin, three veg varieties, and I'm assuming by here you don't mean the varieties, you mean vegetables. Otherwise, with Mike's Mike's been YouTubing different tomato varieties this morning, and so that took a while. Um yeah. Shirley. Ilsa Craig, <laughs> money maker. That's it. Don't no, bother. That's no. That's not what you said. Big Everything Tom. that came on your eyes are getting bigger and bigger. Oh. Um. So three varieties. If you only had three vegetables to grow. Cavallo Nero. Oh, go on. Well, that's my first one. Yeah. All right. Go on. I'll watch your next one. Um. Crown Prince squash. Okay. Pink fur apple potato. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I grow none of them. I'd Having grow, just said that we grow salads, but I love I love all three of those. I'd grow tomatoes, <laughs> beans, just because apart from last year, they're just you can just do them, can't you? And you use them. I probably just I don't know. Garlic. I grow garlic. I think I garlic or I'm thinking of ease. I'm thinking of ease. Courgette, maybe no garlic. I'm sticking to tomatoes, garlic, garlic and what was the other one? I've Garlic's amazing because you can't get it in the shops. Beans, can yeah. you, Jane? You can't get it in the shops. You can't. You, you can't. can't get cran prince squash. Actually, we have got that shed at the back, and you know, Danny has mentioned this time and time again. We've got the huge shed at the back of the allotment, and just this year, we have had um, a new person has come on a few plots down and that space at the back they have put up the most beautiful Danny you'd love it great big almost summer house with a veranda type thing at the back of the plot but he can see over the whole of the plot so he's got a really good vantage point also our friend Dave a couple of plots down yeah. he's got a nice summer house down. but again he can see all down the plot if we transformed that shed into a sort of summer housey veranda style thing. You wouldn't really be able to see anything, or you wouldn't be able to see too far because we've got the polytunnel on one side and we've got the chickens on the other and the big apple tree. So we wouldn't have the same vantage point of a view, but it does need to tidy up. And Mike has got some fencing this afternoon for free, which he's going to use. So, Ashley, in the summer holidays, when you've got nothing else to do. Ashley's welcome to come across, as long as he goes home in good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're looking forward to growing lucid gem, aren't we, this year? Tomato. Danny, how many wines have you had? Lisa Jam, no, Alistair. Oh, it looks lovely. Alistair what a beautifully coloured nice. tomato. It does look nice. Spuds. What's, the, what's the one with the sunset? 
Midnight Snack. Midnight that's the one. Snack. That's the one I threw. Oh, really? <coughs> it looks amazing. I watched I a video about that today, and I, I love know. the colours. Very excited. Looks, about it looks it. like a planet, a very small planet. Okay, look, Nigel Spuds Beans and Onions. Hello, David. Um, Steve Tomato Okra Potato. Question, where can you buy stained glass for a shed? Yes, actually, I don't know, because <laughs> I've actually tried Googling it. I tried Googling it, but you can't get, you can get pieces. I suppose I should just get a five-inch mm. square, shouldn't I, and try and cut it myself. But you can't get them to cut it to that shape. What would work for us would just be a bit of perspex. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, let's just that's, do that. Yeah, I've given yeah. up on Danny. He's not going to send it. Okay, how many wines? <laughs> <laughs> I think you've had three. Um, okay, right. More questions. We've been on nearly an hour and I haven't gone through the questions. Come on, you've got right, Rue's we've questions. Right, we've got Rue now. We've got Rue. Now, Rue, you've got three questions and we loved these. These were funniest memory, scariest memory and happiest memory. Oh. And for me, I'm going first this time because right. they all happened. Rocky! Rocky's got many memories. Rocky! Oh, she seems to want to show. He's not been paid attention to for about He's 45, not. 50 minutes now. Well, look, I've got and a rich tea left. you will not be happy, will you? Well, you have a rich tea, you, will, you, you might turn his nose up at that. Right. He has. No. He's turned his nose up at it. No. He's got no custard cream. He'd have been in there, but yeah. no. Come on. Come on, then. Um, so, happiest memory was um, a couple of years ago when we put that lovely, lovely hammock, not the chair hammock, but a proper big hammock, at the top of the allotment. And it was one of those days, it was a gorgeous sunny day. When you're sitting there, you're underneath the big faraway tree, as I call it. Come on. And it's, um, I was lying there and I just, I thought, this is it. This is what life's meant to be. It was relaxing, you could hear the bird song, dappled sunshine coming through the trees, absolutely lovely. I even had, I even had that. I was very excited because I, I had a crocheted a blanket. And I even had that on the hammock. I thought, this is just bliss. This is just bliss. And then for whatever reason, I got up and I think I went to water the polytunnel. And I went to put my watering can in the water butt. And there was a huge rat in the water butt. So I went from this absolutely blissful state of this is what life's all about to this state of absolute. I think I did scream. Mm. I think I screamed. Do you remember? No. Oh, okay. Well, I screamed and <laughs> ran down for my, and it just went, I'm fine. I'm fine with any animal, any insect. It's just the shot. I think the fact as well, it was dead. And I thought, I felt sorry for it, you know, but yeah, it was big in the water. So then I screamed. So then maybe half an hour later, I then went back up. This isn't saying that I do very much at the allotment, is it? Went back up, got back into the uh, hammock. I went, oh, this is really nice. And the hammock just collapsed it just collapsed and it was one of those big double hammocks <clears throat> and so when it collapsed i just sort of got enveloped in the crochet blanket <laughs> it's going down Jane, who retrieved the rat and who, <laughs> it was you. who disposed of that rat you, you disposed of the rat you just you, you dug it a little under the, one of the um the plum trees at the back i remember saying but what about me plums don't so you know <laughs> that rat had been there a while as well <laughs> Oh, it's all so it's all yeah, it's they were all like tied in together. They're, but some of my happiest oh oh Tony, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. You see Danny. Tony, see? I'll never see this by the way, but thank you. No, 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 he won't, but he'll see it in form at the allotment in some form at the allotment. He will because we've got we have got exciting things coming up. You've got enough for a hammock. About the, no. You could buy a new hammock, hammock just on tonight, couldn't you? <laughs> Good, I good. That's great. But yeah, they're my three. That's lovely, Tony. Thank you so much. Um Ash, don't you donate? You give us enough already. Ash, we're having we're having um requests for your bags, you know. Those Ash who's in the chat has got an allotment for the last couple of years. Across in Wrexham. Across in Wrexham. Yeah. So your your neck of the wood drew. And he um he grows everything in containers. Well, he grows, so he grows a lot in containers, not everything. All right, okay. But, oh, he's, no, got, he but he's, he's got his own aesthetic, hasn't he? Yeah, white plastic containers. White plastic buckets. On black, membrane. Black plastic membrane. And you know what? But if that's, it that's, works, be, that's because he's got a terrible, terrible couch grass problem, actually. Yeah. To be fair, to, be fair oh. to him. Yeah. Oh, oh, the two Ronnies. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> I know which one I am. I always get told that I'm Ronnie really Corbett. Cool, so thank you. Rats are an essential part of the ecosystem. Many have YouTube channels. They do. 
Oh dear. Right. Okay, Mike. Funniest, scariest, happiest memory, Peru. I don't know if I can do all of those questions. I mean, the, probably, well, try, just try your best. I, I've also got a rat associated scary best. question, but probably the scariest thing for me was when I was putting the metal <gasps> roof on top of the big new shed last summer. Mm. And I was using this fancy Makita um, impact driver that I'd mm. bought myself as a bit of a, a grown up person treat because we've made do with terrible tools for years. There are other providers of impact you drivers. Say, you but anyway, so I used this thing and I was kind of just pressing these screws straight into the metal. Um, and I put my fingers there to, to hold the screw in place. And Benny, I basically pressed a little bit too hard and just pushed this impact driver right into my finger here. Um, and basically, yeah, I think I severed a tendon in my finger or a nerve. Um, it was the most excruciatingly painful thing I think I've ever done. And I've had horrible back spasms. It was so painful, I thought I wasn't going to be able to get down off the roof. So <laughs> scary-wise, that, that was pretty scary. I thought I'd kind of completely knackered me. Should you have been my hand. Gloves? I don't think wearing clothes wouldn't have made any difference. It would have just gone straight. It, it didn't, it punctured the skin, but it was more the pressure of the thing, just, you know, weighing. So anyway, never do that. <clears throat> Always drill a little guide hole first and just be patient. That's that, what I would say. Funny, funny occasion. We got loads of compost, sorry, loads of manure delivered one time. Mm. And we had this little, uh, this little sort of system going where we had a, a plank of wood to sort of to go up the plank of wood and then tip the, um, the, comp, the, the sorry, the manure into this big, into this big bay. Uh, and I was okay doing that, despite my my vast size. And then Jane decided to give it a go and just uh, just went straight off the edge. And that was quite funny. That's yeah, the funny manure, for Mike. the manure just went everywhere. I think I think that was in our first little. We used to put a little trailer at the beginning of the videos, didn't we? Yeah, and it's just got me standing at the top, oh, sliding down the bottom. That was funny. Yeah, 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 we had some funny moments. Funny. There. What else was that? What was the other uh, moment? Happiest, Mike, your happiest memory. Happiest Obviously, memory. being with me and spending time with me is one of your happiest. Well, on our first allotment, we had my good friend from college, Chris Bird, and his, uh, and his wife and his kids come across, the so little kids. Oh, that and was And our nice. kids are kind of a little bit grown up. Well, mm. they're very grown up, actually. But well, we built a bonfire. We built a bonfire 30. there. And we were the only people on the plot. And we had a, we had a glass of wine, a couple of, I think we had a couple of beers each. Um, and, and that was really, really nice. So I've, I've got very fond memories of that night. Of having the bonfire. Yeah, the bonfire. Do you remember what you were doing there. with the bonfire? Probably jumping over the bonfire. Jumping through the bonfire. It I probably think... was. And there was alcohol involved, Mike. My friend Chris gets a bit silly. He gets there. silly, doesn't he? So he is likely to jump across a bonfire just, if there's one going. Which is good fun. Yeah, that was great. Can I tie in another funny moment, which ties in with your scariest moment, is when <clears> I was doing the shed. Because, yes, Danny, I was doing it as well. And I was doing the um, floorboards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With the drill. Oh, yeah. And I had gloves on, but what I did was I pressed the drill and the drill sort of must have caught the side of the glove and just whisked it off. And the glove was just going round and round and round with the drill. I just didn't know what to do. That was quite funny. Jane's, sort anyway. of Jane's, Jane's handy woman moment sort of lasts long enough to film a clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, um, Steve Digwell is saying he drilled a hole in his chest. Ooh. I mean, that's just not right. Is For a hanging basket, a put a hanging basket in <laughs> so you can have your salads quite close to hand. Strawberries. A little bit of rocket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, when it drills it, honestly, it is. They, they say, like, you know, bank holidays and and holidays are the worst times for A&E because the amount of accidents people have at home and in the garden is crazy. So, yeah, so they are they are the answers. I couldn't move my finger for about three months. Oh, you've always fingers. licked your elbow at the minute, isn't it? I've got a dodgy elbow. And your back? Back's always a problem. What about your knee? Can't, can't talk about some of the other things. Toes. <laughs> I've got... Um, right. Yeah, I've... I've Junior, Junior pecked my ear before. It's quite, it's quite sore. She's got, I suppose when she's little, it's okay. But when she grows a bigger beak, oh, it's going to be quite sore. I'm going to have to stop her doing that. It cut my smoking pipe. <laughs> oh no, Rue! You put a fork through your welly and into your toe. Oh, that's oh bad. no! You know, <clears throat> yesterday I had, I was telling you there was a, it's a piece of wood. It's been knocked around on that path up by the allotment, by the polytunnel door, probably about that big. So not very big. And it's come off the end of something. It's got a nail sticking out of it. And you know what's coming, don't you? I literally just put my foot flat on it yesterday. And it was the top part of my... 
in, in fact, my big toe, it went just under my big toe there. And I felt the nail just scratch the skin. And I thought, oh. and all I could think of was I hope those boots have got like self-healing soles because they're ever so waterproof. And it'd be a shame if I had a hole in. But I really thought I was going to take my um, boot off and it would just be bleeding. But it wasn't. It was okay. Which meant they were good boots. Why, why have you just patted them? Well, it's just, it's just saying to the congregation. I nailed it. Click like. As it will help. Oh, thank you. As it will help the algorithm. Is that thank right? Thank you very Is that what it much. Helps? It does help the algorithm. And tomorrow morning at work, Ash, who is a mathematician, can I explain what an algorithm is. Yes. Yeah. In Ashley, layman's terms. Ashley, it's been a long time. Tony, you know how confused I get when talking about the algorithm. Um, it's basically what YouTube uses to see how popular your videos are which then dictates how far it will push them out is that the simple way so likes that you get show the youtube thinks things that people are enjoying your video even dislikes it's interaction any interaction you get whether it's a like or a view um did you that will all go towards youtube recognizing your channel and the more you get the more it will push which is why it's very difficult when you first start if you're not getting likes etc or even after nine years. Did you, <laughs> did, did you answer Marcy's question? I haven't gone to Marcy yet because she's, well, she's not on. No, Jane, is that not right, Tony? Well, that's how I see it. Algorithm is a horrible, horrible thing that means that you, to do really well in YouTube, you've got to do things that, frankly, I'm not comfortable doing. And so, which is why people who, I don't know, I can't say without upsetting people, but I I can't naturally pull a horrified face and say, Oh my God, we're all going to die. Dead. And it's... Um, chicken yeah, death. Yeah. I think you might have done that. No, no, no. Well, I talked about the chicken, but I certainly didn't go... Hen horror. Yeah, you know, dead and you've got a... But you know what, though? But you know tongue, what, though? You know. These are the rules of the game. So if you're going to... If exactly. You're gonna, if you're going to no, try no. and grow your audience, then you've got to engage with that, haven't you? Well, I'm hoping, right, that when you retire, you might do the thumbnails and people might think, oh, he looks a bit funny. We'll, we'll come and watch that. <laughs> it's just, isn't it? I can't do it. But if you're not, get it, that's just it. It is a game. And, you know, there are, I suppose, rules. What you can do is you can, you, you can ramble on endlessly, can't you? And, and not, not. You can ramble on endlessly, like Ronnie Corbett. Yeah. And, yeah. and maybe in 100 years' time, you will have a good following. Yeah, Tony, yeah. I know you've told me this before. Change the word algorithm with the audience. There. She's already lost, Tony. <laughs> She's already lost. Right I know now. more than a day. I know, Tony, you helped me out a couple of years ago now. And there were so many things. I'd already been going for seven years. So many things I didn't know. You know, and I, I think people now, when they start, or even the last year or two, everyone's that much more savvy. With the, the technical side of it, I don't know about you, um, when you started, Tony, or Nigel, um, when you started, but as far as the algorithm was concerned, YouTube was a much smaller place. It was a much smaller community. I suppose there was less competition, if you like. And so I didn't really look at the algorithm. I know my brother bought me a, a book. I think about, I did, actually. Yeah, or was it you? How to yeah. Succeed at YouTube. Yeah. That never got looked at. <laughs> Which is, which, is why, which is why it's where we are today. So I know, I know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. What's da what's Danny say? No, this live should be called One Live, Two Hosts, Three Questions by Jane Kelly. That was 2010. Yeah, we have moved on from that, Tony. But that's just it. People think you just you just film things and that's it. But there's, there are a lot of things in the background that you have to consider but it's still good to be authentic. I, think. I, I saw some of your live this afternoon, um, Danny, and Gemma was saying some really good things about... Being, Gemma did. Gemma did. Not you, Danny. <laughs> no, she was talking about being authentic. I didn't see it's, it. I didn't see it. You, you can, you know, ultimately you are doing it because you're showcasing your channel or you're show. in our case, we're showcasing the garden. I'm not an actor. It's the way I see it is the way I see it. So, yeah. So if you want to subscribe to the channel, please do. <laughs> <laughs> because we'll soon be desperately we'll poor. We'll soon be desperate. 
Have you just given... <clears throat> look, you haven't just given me another 20. Have you just given another 20? Oh, oh, that is... I don't know if you have given me another 20, look. I can't work this out. But if you have, that is so kind. That is really, really kind. It's... <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of all sorts now. Ooh, maybe we'll get a hive. We're not going to get a hive. We're not going to get a hive. Do you know what? It's very nice of Locke to donate, but... Don't what, what, it. In, in a way, what's even nicer is, is thinking about Danny. <laughs> That's, this is what, yeah, mm -hmm. this has come back for you, Danny, here. This is what always happens, Locke, isn't it? On Danny's channel, you donate just to see my expression. Well, I'd like to see Danny's face now. Yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. It's really, really, it is another one. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question before we before we go? Well, Not no, that I'm saying we're going. Because, but... Rue, of course, you've been doing it for six years as well. And you've seen the changes. I know. I know. Look, I'm removing you from this line. <laughs> Don't you dare. Don't you dare, Danny. Okay. I can stop whining now. One Mike, of, two words. One of, I was just going to say, one of the things that we're going to grow this summer is salsify. <laughs> Oh, yes. That's the other thing. That's the other thing we're growing. Have we is done it, it before? Vegetable oyster. Is it worth bothering with? Has anyone grown salsify? Or are you better off just trying gladiator parsnip? Is salsify or scots honora no, no, worth different. the effort? I know they're, and they're slightly different, but, but they're similar similar family. Are they worth bothering with? Bye, Steve. Thank you. Um, I hate it. <laughs> Tony, just tell it like it is. Yeah. yeah it's... You won't be doing any videos about that. I'm over <laughs> I see. I hate it. Okay, but they do grow well. Salsify. Ah, that got you back in, Steve. So salsify then, it might be known as a different thing, like the eggplant aubergine thing elsewhere. No, it's not, it's not a parsnip. It's not a it's, parsnip. No, I know it's not a it's parsnip. It's a root. It is a root, yeah. So, But there's in its Scots, own right. Scots Sonera. has a black That's skin. That's the black root. A dark skin. But has it got white inside? They both have. So what's it? We salsify white on the outside as well. Kind of like a kind of like a parsnip. We have grown it once. We before. have grown it when we took on the first the allotment down the But the, the question road. is, is it worth bothering with? Because I've I've read people love it. It's got a really exotic, Bitter. oystery sort of taste. Apparently, yeah. People when, will when say that. They well. want to try and. But is it a bit? Is it another they're... movie? Is it a sort of a smaller brother of the movie, where you can have one plant and it may be enough for you forever? Yeah, bitter. Danny, have you grown it before? Tony says it's very bitter. It, again, it's just one of those things to have a go, isn't it? I know a lot of people like to, after a good few years growing, they like to simplify everything and uh, <coughs> and go down to just the things that they're going to eat. And that's great. That's Shirley fine. Tomato, King Edward. Um, but we're not there yet, are we? No. We're, there's still things that excite us. So like your, your sweet potato, which is way too late. Yeah. It's way too late now. When it, it's such a long season. But again, the salsify and scores near We've got the space. We've got the time. We'll just give it a go. Can anyone, a posh, dandy, a posh dandelion? Is it? So it's got a similar root, hasn't it? If, if anyone has ever tried dandelion root, because it is I think edible. It's, I think it's funny. We have tried before with dandelion root. It's horrendous. Yeah. We, we dried it because apparently you could make a, a coffee substitute. Um, I mean, we were, it's meant we're, to be like chicory. I think so. we're in our 20s then and we were desperately poor. We we're so <laughs> poor that we we're trying to make coffee out of dandelion <laughs> roots. Because <laughs> coffee was expensive. God. We got really excited. We waited for it to dry. We grated it. Do you remember? I think we ate the other pheasants. That we, we, not that we ran over, but that oh, we no, ran no, over no, by the no, side no, of the road. No, roadkill. God, yeah, yeah, we were yeah. so poor. Definitely. Oh, shush now. We've got. <laughs> 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 Look, look like come don't, back and then Daniel explode. Um, but yeah, 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 it was horrendous. So, you know, when you hear people saying, Yeah, well, dandelion, you can eat them. Yeah, you can. You can eat them. Um, you can eat the roots, you, you can eat the flowers, but you know. Why would you? Yeah, exactly. Why when there's other nice the things? Chickens you can love eat? them though, don't they? Well, they do, but to be honest, my feels are like mice, you know. So it's not that they've eaten well, you know. Chard's know. another one, isn't it? Oh, chard is lovely though. Chard is chard looks beautiful at least. Yeah, and it's it depends what you do with it. So you can chop it and add we say this all the time, butter and garlic. Such a simple thing, but that's a perfect and, meal. and in a trendy sort of um Hey Linda, hello. Trendy smoothie bar in the States, you probably would get charred in a in a smoothie, wouldn't you? It's the sort of thing that you would. Probably very, very good you for get you. Kale in a smoothie. You can get charred, I think. I don't know why you'd want yeah. it though. 
Did you remember to roast them? Yes, we roasted them first. That was good. Yeah, chard is just gorgeous and everything, um, Tony. Right, we are going to, Mike's doing this. You can't see, but he's doing this on my leg. So, he, which means we haven't actually eaten yet. So, and the, we are going, we're not going, we're going a little bit fuzzy actually as well. With the Does light it get changing. older? Yeah. <laughs> just with <laughs> getting redder. Chop the stem. I actually quite like the stems, Rue. I quite like that, um, the texture of the stems. Dandelion coffee. Oh, Linda, come on now. Especially if you've got bed. Well, maybe you're the person who, you know, this book that we read was written for. Yes. <laughs> okay. Has anybody, written, has anybody written a book called Crap Vegetables to advise Ooh. advise gardeners about the pitfalls of growing don't, don't salsify? Say that word because we might get taken off. We might get taken off. Yeah, we might. Yeah. <laughs> terrible, terrible vegetables. That'd be quite interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. Vegetables not to grow. Overrated veg. Yeah, yeah. Smoothie bars, bars right. Right, okay. So before we go, what what should we say? Has anyone got any more questions for us with regard to what we've been up to over the last nine years, what we're hoping to be doing? Should we say what we're hoping to be doing? No, should we leave that for another time? Well, no, I think we've probably covered it, haven't we, really? You've got your patch. Mike's patch. Mike's patch. You've got your cookery nook. Shed update. The big, the big shed. shed. Re renovating that chickens. giant shed. Um, something I've got. Re yeah, it might be nicer if you actually buy it from the shop where they know what they're doing, Linda, as opposed to trying to. Make it vertical gardening. Bit of vertical, vertical gardening. gardening in the I want to try yeah. that. Well, we're, we're all, we do that all the time. That's mm -hmm. just growing up. As we do that. Um, but no, something I was watching a video from Nile Gardens earlier and he's making a guild garden. And to be honest, he's, he's done a few of these videos and I thought, oh, we must belong to some guild and he's being sponsored to make a garden. But what it is, is something to do with permaculture. And he's talking about each group of plants belonging to a certain guild. So he's got fruit trees in and around his fruit trees, he's got one guild, which are the mulchers. So comfrey, nasturtium, things that will cover the ground. Another layer is your attractors. So things that bring in pollinators and just look nice. And it's really, really interesting. And so we've got those couple of fruit trees that we forgot about. You know, when people buy you like um, just like a pack of three fruit trees and they come with like no root on via Amazon and uh, you put them in a bucket of water and hope they'll come. Well, we put them in that bin at the back of the polytunnel, didn't we? They mm. just has been full of Stayed dirty there for a year. water. Well, they did. And we noticed this spring, they were actually flowering again. So bless them. We'd, we had completely forgotten about them, but now we need somewhere to plant them. So I'm thinking, actually, the bit in front, as you first walk into the allotment, we've got the shed on the left. We've got the tree I did the little cloud pruning on, on the right. In front of there, we've actually got a patch that we just walk around on, but we don't use it. And so I think, again, I've said before, it's one of these things just when we think we've done everything and used all the space. I am now looking at that and thinking we could put those fruit trees there. Yeah. I'm just laughing. I think it's one of Danny's comments. Uh, yeah, people and, always buy me fruit trees. <laughs> yeah, happens all the time. Yeah. And, uh, and and do like a guild, a bit of a guild garden there. So that would be interesting. Yeah. Rocky, come on. Danny, I don't know. You, you get bought all come sorts, on. mister. <laughs> That's the only thing you okay. haven't been bought, Danny, yeah, three trees. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Have you ever, during your nine years, considered giving up the allotment? Yes. Because we have given we have given up one allotment because we moved. Well, yeah, but that Second was... one because the kids were too little and they're always getting tetanus and falling yeah. out with each other and eating worms and things like that. So they... We, they, were, we were just too, they were too young, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. But we've, ha we've been doing it now for nine years and we've not wanted to give up. Yeah, well, that, that was that was years ago. So this, we're on our fourth allotment now, aren't we? But YouTube's, this one we've YouTube's been a, a different thing, isn't it? YouTube, I, I think about giving up YouTube. Tonight? <laughs> she's back on it now. <laughs> How often? Weekly? Certainly monthly, because you do, you get... What's been nice this last week, I think I said before, was I've just set the camera up oh. and Mike and I have just gone on with jobs. Oh, and God. yeah, so I've not been like talking to the camera or anything. And I'll do a bit of an intro for so next week's video, just be able to get on with stuff. But it, it can become a bind when you're thinking. Don't end on a Debbie Downer. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. It, it, and I say bind. I don't mean bind. That's a horrible thing. But it, 
it can be a bit off-putting when you are thinking, well, I don't want to do that because I want to wait till I've got my camera up there and get that sorted. Or you do something and you don't get any feedback. And it, it can be incredibly disheartening, but outweighing that are the rewards. I think the rewards are just wonderful. So, yeah, I, I just moan. And Danny knows, don't you, Danny? I'll just moan on about it for a bit. Happens all the time. Okay. Yeah, Nine I mean, for you, Lock. Yeah, Fruit I, Tree Guilds. Oh, so you know about it, Lock, as well. I'm, I am looking into it. 12 Hi, Liz. trees. Where's Liz? Yay. Hey, she's, Liz. She's timed that perfectly. Liz, we're just going. <laughs> what are you doing? Well done, Liz. Liz, I was just talking about Niall doing the... Um, the fruit tree guild i thought that was literally a fruit tree guild of which i'm not a member but watching him today he was talking about what the different things of permaculture with the guilds i'm really interested in doing that so it's just talking about coming on and doing it so yeah <clears throat> yeah yeah danny i don't think people are going to do that i don't think people will donate because... to you for counseling because before they donate to you for counseling yeah. me daily we've got this idea I had to put up with 30 years of counselling. So a couple of years for you. I got an MA. I've got a PhD in counselling. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, most people will never it can get over it can get overwhelming, Tony. And I think, yeah, when you've been doing it a long time, yeah, you, yeah, it can be. I can answer that. What question percentage from of Nigel? your allotment time would you reckon is spent on filming? Well, Mike's none. Right, my or one percent. I rarely go up without either the camera or my phone, but the times when I go up without again, Danny, you were saying before <clears throat> you went up today without your camera, and it was just lovely. The time when you go up without the camera, it's really quite freeing because even if I've got my phone, I'm thinking, Oh, that looks lovely, and it's it's not that I'm thinking I need content necessarily, I'm thinking, Oh, that's lovely, that's really. Today, when we took the old birdhouse down, there was a really old nest in it, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. With a tiny little egg. I mean, it must have been from last year, maybe the years the year before. Hey! And the first thing, Paul oh, Barry. $2, dollars, that's my brother. Paul <laughs> yes, I do still cheat at board games. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I, I, we've just got this picture of this beautiful egg in a nest. And I think, so, yeah, I, I do just want to share, and it is content as well, but I think a lot of times, like with you, Tony, I mean, you're, and so you've got the hang of doing it regularly. I still haven't got a plan. I still need a plan, don't I, really? Yeah. I need to sort of get myself into some sort of routine. But Nigel, she does look, spend quite a bit of time filming, and she spends quite a bit of time with the time chickens. wasting as yeah. well. So, like, you know, today... I was trying to dig a bean trench today, which uh, is, is a bit physical thing, which as I you know. Filmed. Which uh, filmed. Yeah, it wasn't a massive trench or anything like that. No. But I looked no. to see where Jane is, and she's sitting in the uh, the chicken pen with with, chicken uh, with a chicken on, on her shoulder. <laughs> so that's the kind of thing. If you want happy eggs, we need to have happy chickens. But and the only what? way to have happy chickens is to be nice to them. these two and ancient that's an important these, job. These two ancient battery hens they must be five years old now. They're laying an egg a day each, aren't they? They are. They. Yeah. Quite amazing, really. So it works to talk to your chickens to spend all your time with them. It doesn't make economic sense. Yeah, yeah. That's I the know, thing. I know. People will never know, Jane, how much time a video takes. No, Danny, no. And how many times you have to walk under that arch. Honestly. It's... I know. <laughs> We've counted. We've counted. <laughs> there should be a video. We should I have think... a drinking game about every time you walk under that arch, Danny. Danny. Could, oh, no. could you do a video called Underneath the Arches? Oh, yeah. Just an hour solid just of you going underneath arch. arches from different angles in your, in your allotment. I'd love that. We're being horrible. It'd be like Danny, a mindfulness video, wouldn't it? We love Danny. We love Danny. And then just end it Long with Jane climbing Silver over the top of with the chicken on the shoulder. Have you seen them on Instagram? I've put a couple of pictures on Instagram, um, Nigel, with Junior Junior there. Yeah, yeah. So I know it's the hard work, but there's always room for improvement, Danny. Do I? I think actually, since I mentioned it last uh, time, I think you have cut down on walking under your arches. But I think there's probably still quite a high proportion. And it's a lovely place. It's a lovely place to walk. <laughs> I I, it took me a while to realise that there weren't 50 arches on the plot. Yeah. But that's good. And do you know, Tony's that's just good. saying there that it took him a lot of attempts to sort of to do the intro for, his, for a, a recent yeah, video. But, Tony, the difference is you know that that video is 
a probably going to go viral and you're going to get some feedback for it was you know, and it is different if you're not getting feedback and that's my fault i know it's very different and we all do it different ways if you know you're getting feedback i think making a video can be really quite nice and i do enjoy it i do enjoy it and, and but when you don't get feedback it can you there are days when you just say oh. and also people like tony and um and nigel um and Teach danny and other things. people are, are, are very very good gardeners i mean i'm saying danny you know, you know what I mean? They're very, very good, very, very experienced gardeners. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we're not like that, really, are we? What do you mean? We've been... We're not wizards. We've done we've it for a while now. We've been gardening but... since before Danny was born. It must be very satisfying to know that the thing that you're doing is going to be followed by loads and loads of people all around the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, whereas probably people all around the world aren't going to be having a chicken gun up their arm. Yeah, yeah. The dog is crying. The dog is crying. Yeah. Probably hear the Tonight, dog whining Matthew, I want to be here. a gardener. What is this? Pick on. Oh, no, Danny. We do. We love you. Come on. We love you dearly. We do. Listen, it is five minutes to go. Yeah. Rocky, there's five minutes to go. Before we go, I do want to mention, I mentioned on the last video, we have got a giveaway. I'm saying we. Um, a giveaway for two tickets to Gardener's World <laughs> Live. Exactly, Linda. Exactly. Yeah. I want we more love of it, that not less. Way. Yeah, do it more. Um, both sides. <laughs> you do a fair bit of walking through. You've only got one archway and you walk through yours a fair bit. I've got several archways. I've got. She's got two. Uh, uh, and in the. Yeah. yeah, you've got two. And two in the poly. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, two tickets for Gardeners World Live on Sunday, the 16th of June. If you want to go, mention it in the comments below. Tell me why you want to go. Give me a like. And that sort of, you see, I'm just no good at this sort of thing, am I? I'm just no good at plugging stuff. Um, but that would be nice. So, yeah, they would be free Sunday, the 16th of June, Gardener's World at the NEC in Birmingham. And we can both vouch for the chat. The fact it's a really good show, isn't it? Uh, We're going to be there. We'll be there. Me and Locke are not into the into the giveaway again. Does that mean it's Bumblebee Adventure in the States somewhere? No. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. We will try and get something that's more global. But uh, so far, we just got tickets for Birmingham. But uh, yeah, yeah, I will, Linda. I will, and we'll enjoy it. Okay, but yes, anything else you'd like to say, Mike? We have got very pixelated and rather. It's quite nice actually because it irons out the wrinkles. I need to um, adjust the lighting. We've I'd just like to red. say, I'd just like to say thank you for your interest this evening. Yeah, That's it's been like really nice. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Locke. Thank you, Tony, and thank you, Locke, again. <laughs> your contribution really nice everyone thank you so much for coming along to the chat um it was just a, a thought a few years ago and who knows where we'll be in a, a year's time probably sitting here talking about exactly the same thing probably <laughs> but yeah we've got a good year ahead and it, mike's going to have that much more time so you'll probably be seeing more of him in a good way sorry so yeah <laughs> Okay, but thank you so much for coming along, and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye. I can never work out how to end the stream. I'm smiling like a professional. <laughs> I'm smiling. Bye.